starting up with assignment 3 the example is show that the set a plus iota b c plus iota d is a basis of the vector space c r where c is the set of complex numbers if and only if ad is not equal to bc now here the vector space is of the complex numbers right and these are a plus iota b and c plus iota d these are nothing but the complex numbers where b and d is the imaginary part and a and c is the real part and i have to show that this set is a basis of the vector space cr if and only if ad is not equal to bc now because it is if and only if in the statement which means both the ways we have to show first let me consider that the set a plus iota b and c plus iota d this is the basis of the vector space cr and i have to prove that ad is not equal to bc and then the other way if ad is not equal to bc then prove that this set is the basis of vector space cr so it is a both way proof right all right so um, first of all let's suppose that a plus iota b c plus iota d this is a basis for cr and if it is a basis for cr then these two vectors are naturally linearly independent because for basis two conditions are required the vectors should be linearly independent and second these should be the generators of the vector space so this is linearly independent we have to show that ad is not equal to bc right or uh, let if possible suppose ad is equal to bc we will reach a contradiction right all right now let's suppose that let's take the linear combinations of these vectors alpha into a plus iota b plus beta into c plus iota d i have taken alpha beta to be the scalars and this is equal to zero then alpha a plus beta c this is equal to zero equating the real and imaginary parts right uh, all right let me write first like this take this plus iota times alpha b plus beta d so this is equal to zero now equating the real and imaginary parts we get the real part here zero can be taken as zero plus iota zero so the real part is also zero and the imaginary part is also zero so on equating the real and imaginary part i get alpha a plus beta c is equal to zero and alpha b plus beta d is equal to zero marking this as one now this is my system of homogeneous equations right so let me take the coefficient matrix of the system and that a is just write the coefficients of the scalars so it is a b and c and d now if we see here what is the determinant of a it is a d minus b c and what we have supposed that these two are equal we have to prove that these two are not equal a d is not equal to b c this we have to prove but we have supposed that a d is equal to b c which means the difference is zero now whenever the determinant of the coefficient matrix for the system of homogeneous equations is zero which means the system one has non-trivial solution which means alpha beta are not both zero that is a plus iota b and c plus iota d are linearly dependent this is a contradiction because it is given to us that these forms the basis which means these are linearly independent but here we are we have reached that these are linearly 
dependent which is a contradiction so our supposition was wrong thus ad is not equal to bc now the other way the converse part let ad is not equal to bc and we will claim that these two forms the basis for cr now how they will form the basis for that i have to prove that these two are linearly independent and these are the generators of cr all right let again we have to take the linear combinations and i am taking my scalars to be alpha beta again so let alpha a plus iota b plus beta c plus iota d this is equal to 0 then alpha a plus beta c plus iota alpha b plus beta d this is equal to 0 now equating the real and imaginary parts again we get alpha a plus beta c is equal to 0 and alpha b plus beta d is equal to 0 now this is my system of homogeneous equations let me mark this as 2 let's take the coefficient matrix now for this system so it is a b c d now now check the determinant it is a d minus b c now because we have a d is not equal to b c which means this determinant is non-zero and whenever the determinant is non-zero which means the system 2 has trivial solution very good so it has a trivial solution and trivial solution means all the scalars are zero so alpha equal to beta is equal to zero which means these are linearly independent first thing has done all right now the second thing for uh, to for, for the basis these given uh, vectors should be the generators of the vector space now for that we have to take an element from the vector space first that is c so let me take one element let's say x plus iota y i have taken from c and i will prove that every element of c is a linear combination of these given vectors where x and y belongs to the set of real numbers let x plus alpha y, let me write this element to be the linear combinations of the given vectors that is a plus iota b and c plus iota d. What I have to do this, I have to find the value of alpha beta in terms of x and y and then put back these values of alpha beta here so that I can say that x plus alpha y is a linear combinations of the given vectors. Let me mark this as 1. Now alpha a plus beta c plus iota times alpha b plus beta d. Again, equating the real and imaginary parts, what we get? We get x is equal to alpha a plus beta c and y is equal to alpha b plus beta d. Now when you solve these two, and you just get the values of alpha and beta from these two equations and on solving you get alpha to be equal to dx minus cy over ad minus bc and the value for beta will come as ay minus bx over ad minus bc now putting these values of alpha and beta back into the equation 1 so i get x plus iota y put the value of alpha here put the value of beta here now these values are in terms of x and y so putting values of alpha and beta in 1 we get x plus iota y is equal to alpha all right dx minus cy over AD minus BC into A plus iota B plus 
Then for beta, it is a y minus b x over a d minus b c into c plus eta d. Now I can say that my scalars are in terms of x and y. So x plus eta y is a linear combination of a plus eta b and c plus eta d. But x plus eta y was arbitrary. Therefore, every element of c is a linear combination of the given vectors, which means C is generated by them. Generated by these vectors. So therefore, A plus iota B and C plus iota D finally forms basis for CR. Right? Very good example. Now the example 2. This example is a practical one. Show that in R3, the subspace W is equal to 0, Y, Z, where Y and Z is belonging to R, is generated by 0, 2, minus 1 and 0, 1, 2. I have to show that these, this W subspace is generated by these two vectors. And is this a basis for W? We also have to check this, right? Okay. Now, is W is generated by these two vectors? We have to show this. All right. So for that, we have to take an element from W. Let's say that we take and it is given to us what kind of element W is having. 0, Y, Z. That is the Y, Z plane. So it is 0, Y, Z. Let's take this element from W. And let 0, Y, Z is equal to linear combinations of. Now this is equal to alpha. Now, because we have to uh, take, uh, it is given, these two vectors are given to us. So, let's write that this element is a linear combination of these two vectors. And where alpha and beta are the scalars. We have to get the value of alpha and beta in terms of yz. Now, since uh, we can solve this further, this is 0. And then this is 2 alpha plus beta. And this is negative alpha plus 2 beta. Very fine. So from here we get the equations as we don't need 0 equal to 0. It is just leave this. So this is y is equal to 2 alpha plus beta. And z is equal to negative alpha plus 2 beta. Just solve these two equations. And you will get alpha, the value for alpha as 1 over 5, 2y minus z. And the value of beta comes out to be 1 over 5, y plus 2z. Now the values of alpha and beta are in terms of yz. Substitute these values in 1 here. So 0 yz is equal to alpha, which is 1 over 5, 2 y minus z, into that vector, which is 0, 2, negative 1, plus beta, 1 over 5, y plus 2 z, into 0, 1, 2. So now, 0 yz is a linear combination of these vectors. And this element was arbitrary, which means every element of W is a linear combination of these vectors, which means W is generated by these vectors. Secondly, we have to show that these vectors are linearly independent, right? In the first part, we have showed that W is generated by these vectors. Now, are these vectors from bases or not? For that, we have to check that. These vectors are also linearly independent. This is the remaining conditions for the bases, right? So, for that, again, we have to take the linear combinations of these vectors, where alpha and beta are my scalars. So, this is 0, 2, negative 1, plus alpha times this, plus beta times 0, 1, 2, equal to 0, 0, 0. So, then this is... This is 0 and this is 2 alpha plus beta, then negative alpha plus 2 beta. So this is equal to 0, 0, 0. So we get to skip 0 equal to 0. You get 
2 alpha plus beta is equal to 0 and negative alpha plus 2 beta is equal to 0. Let me name this as my system of equations as 1. We have to find out the coefficient matrix. You can either find out the values of alpha and beta or you can also check by finding the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So just writing the coefficients of the scalars. So this is 2, negative 1, 1 and 2. And we see that the determinant of this matrix is this is 4 minus minus 1 which is 5. And this is non-zero, which means the system has only trivial solution, which means alpha and beta all are zero. So these two vectors are linearly independent and these forms the basis for W. Why? Because these vectors also generating the space, subspace W and also these are linearly independent. So from these two results, these two conditions are satisfied for the basis which means these two vectors forms the basis for W.